everybody. Welcome to today's episode of Homeschool for the Soul. I'm Stacey Travisano and I'm here today with Megan Bell who is going to provide us with some awesome insight on how we can be thankful and show our thankfulness right now to first responders that are in hospital set settings. So doctors, nurses, uh, receptionists, front desk people, um, people that are cleaning in hospitals right now. Um, thank you so much, Megan, for joining us today. Uh, can you share with us a little bit about what you do and how you are involved with all of those levels of healthcare providers so that we, everyone can understand why we asked you for your insight because you have so much knowledge to share. Um, but I know that not everybody on this call today knows. Go ahead. Sure. So hi, for those that don't know me, um, I'm Megan Bell. Me and my husband, Ryan, attend Real Life. Um, Ryan's a high school counselor in Chino, and we have three kids. Aubrey is 13 and in seventh grade. Jordan is 10 and in fourth. And Brayden is six and in first for 16 years now. Um, my background is mostly critical care and emergency room. And then I went into working in organ transplant about... 13, 14 years ago. Um, so I currently work as the manager of an organ transplant um, call team um, at USC in um, Los Angeles. So my team um, sets up all the organ transplants. We get organ offers from across the nation and set up heart, lung, liver, kidney, and pancreas transplants. So it's a lot of interaction with um, patients and people from all outside hospitals. Um, we go to outside hospitals to recover organs and bring them back. We work with the operating room. We work with the front desk with just getting um, our people in and out safely and with the lab to get testing for our patients. So we kind of work with everybody because it takes about um, 500 moving parts to make a transplant happen. 500, oh my goodness. It's a lot, it's a really big number. It's obviously a big deal taking organs we're moving organs from one person to the next, but 500, that's, that's a, that's it's a large number. It's a lot of people, in, it's a lot of people involved from people at outside hospitals mm -hmm. and across the country to the transport of it, to safely, you know, transplanting them. It's just a lot of moving pieces that we have to put together. So you mentioned to me about how um, this time has, has put a strain on your team and what you guys have been able to do because of coming into and going into, um, going out of different hospitals than you guys are usually able to travel to and from. But also with that perspective, you've heard um, stories and you obviously manage your team and, and hear their stories every day um, about how difficult it's been because of changing information, um, so right procedures for you guys, and how that affects an industry that unless you're in it, you really don't know how different it has become in a matter of weeks and months. For so many of us, our jobs look so different now than they did eight weeks ago. Um, but in the healthcare industry, it's just so extraordinarily different. Um, on a given day, you even mentioned procedures can change within that day, right? And you have to communicate that to the team. So, um, so when we are trying to think of how, we, and we've seen things on the news, like you can bring food or like there's thankful parades that come into the hospital, which I'm sure people do appreciate, but what is, what is something tangible we can do? Because we all want to be thankful. We want to all be helpful and not hurtful in this season, what are, what are some things that we can do? Like what wisdom can you provide us on how we can say thanks right now? Um, I think there's a few things. I think one um, is realizing that a lot of nurses and healthcare providers um, are under a lot of strain and stress during this time, just as their job does change. Um, one of my coordinators put it really well when she said what used to take her you know, 10 minutes to call and admit a patient for transplant. You just, you know, pick up the phone, you call the patient, you call the front desk and you tell them to come in. There's now 10 steps that we have to do before we can bring in a patient because we have to screen them first for COVID over the phone. 
then we have to escalate anything to physicians, then we have to do paperwork, then we have to talk about whether we're making the patient wait in the car or we're bringing them in, and we actually have to get a safe transport team that will transport our patient in. So there's so many added steps that um, everything's taken a little bit longer. Um, so I think one thing is having a little bit of maybe patience with healthcare providers. I know a lot of people are now having to go to telemedicine appointments and that is a great option for those of you that are still needing to see a doctor and need that. Um, it puts less strain on the healthcare system if you can do telemedicine, but keeping in mind, just giving us that patience that there's times that our internet's going to go down because we're working from home or something like that. Um, so I think that's one way that we can just remember that um, a lot of these changes were kind of thrust upon healthcare providers and we have to kind of figure out how to do it. Um, I think another thing is remembering that it's not just the doctors and nurses. We see that a lot on TV, everybody and in the news is saying the doctors, the nurses. But I think one of the people that I've worked with the most throughout the last couple of weeks is someone in our lab that is in charge of the process for how we're testing patients for COVID-19. And the process literally changes um, daily for us on what our protocols are and how we're appropriately testing. And this um, woman that I've had the pleasure of working with has been such a great resource and even let us call her in the middle of the night for questions. And she's kind of one of those ones that kind of gets forgotten. We look at the doctors, the nurses, but not really the lab techs that are there and the people that are cleaning and our CT techs that are taking our patients down for procedures and making sure that they're safely protected too. So I think trying to remember that it's a whole team approach. I like that. That's definitely helpful, especially like you were saying, like the extra steps now there are and keeping in mind how many pieces like for you, there are involved on a season before what we're in now. There are lots and lots of people to consider that we have that we get to be thankful for and being kind, um, patient when we're interacting with anybody in healthcare, no matter what they do, but also being kind is super great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then um, what is what is something we can do ourselves? Like how can we, like you mentioned telehealth, so um, not everybody knows that that's even an option, I think, or how open that is now as opposed to eight weeks ago. Yeah, definitely. I think that that's um, ask your provider if you do need to be seen because that is a great option. Um, we had actually never used it before at USC, really, for transplant. And when we shut down on March 13th, by March 16th, we were up and running with evaluating patients for transplant over telemedicine and completely had changed our whole process. Um, and it's been working really smooth where we can still make sure our patients are getting the care they need without bringing them in to expose healthcare workers. Cause I think that's one thing um, is that those of us that do have to go in are being exposed um, just on a daily basis um, to not just COVID-19, but to other stuff as well. So even just remembering that the less people that um, filter in does kind of cut down on that exposure. So the more that we can follow certain guidelines, um, you know, I've been really, I've got boys, like I've got Aubrey, but then I've got my two boys who are a rough house and they're rowdy and dirty, but I'm really working with them on like, yes, we washed our hands before, but we're just washing our hands a lot more now. <laughs> and it's just a good practice, even something we probably should have done before this, but just a good reminder to stay safe and healthy. Absolutely, because if we are able to take care of ourselves and our health, then we're going to be helping care for the people that are keeping us all healthy every day. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I like that. Wash your hands and then wash your hands again and it's okay to wash them again. Yeah, I like that, that's really good. Um, and then, like you said with um, not then bringing, so like us bringing food or having food brought in is, while it might seem like a nice thing to do, it might not actually be helpful in this season, right? Yeah, I think deliveries are definitely much better, like a delivery of something to a hospital. Um, we have had a couple like food trucks kind of try and set up and it kind of becomes a mess because everybody wants to go at once and then you can't really um, space people apart, which especially in the hospital setting, we want to be providing that example. So we have to be doing that. So I think um, 
maybe not delivering something directly to a hospital, but thinking about your healthcare workers that are going into the hospital working, but then also having their kids at home and trying to manage that is what ways can you, can you help? Can you offer to take someone's kid for a few hours? Can you, you know, drop off um, some resources for them or something? Because that's a lot of my, I'm lucky that I've been working from home managing transplants for the last, um, but however many days it's been 58, 59. Um, but some of my nurses are that work at our hospital are having to go obviously in, and some of them have little kids at home too. So how are there ways we can support them at the home level rather than bringing something directly to the hospital maybe? And like you said, because there are, we are, you are all in not different spots. That's not the right way to say it, but because you have support where you could, when you have to go to a hospital, you have someone at home to provide care for your kids, maybe reach out to people that we know that are in that industry and say, how can I help you? What can I be doing? I am praying for you, but can I bring you a meal? What can I bring you when I'm out running my errands or when the person in our family is out, you know, doing their shopping what can we help you with i like that exactly and just realizing that a lot of nurses jobs have changed a lot of our nurses that used to come in to see patients in clinic are now seeing them over telemedicine or working from home so that's changed their whole job and i think nurses tend to be very um we're very type a I'm like you've got your little checklist and you like to just get things done and take care of your patients and we're being asked to care for our patients in a completely different way now um, so finding ways that we can help support healthcare providers through that. Then um, you and I had also spoken about, you know, we see negative things on, and you see negative things, your colleagues see negative things about healthcare or first responders or health providers. What can we do to help with turning that tide? Because I can only imagine how in a season when your whole world has changed, you are weary and stressed out, and then also have a different layer of anxiety. Um, How heavy that must be to carry that burden in a season when everything is completely flipped upside down. What is something we can do to help reverse that trend? I think not being a voice in the negativity is the biggest thing that we can do is sometimes, and this is something that I've learned very well during this uh, time season, sometimes the best thing to say is nothing, And um, if you can't say something supportive and it's something that maybe you don't agree with some of the decisions out there, maybe know that a lot of nurses, we're not the ones making the decisions, but we are the ones that are having to follow them and doing the best that we can with the constraints we're given. And that for us, it's a little bit harder because we don't have the option to stay home. So we do have to go in. So our comfort level may be very different from a lot of people's out there. We may not be as comfortable with not wearing a mask or not going or going to the store because of what we're seeing on a daily basis. So maybe if just not being a voice in that negativity, um, because it's hard to hear the negative things when you're also seeing things from a different perspective. That's super helpful. And you, you had said something about that, about being careful and or mindful of the lens that we are seeing things through and how important that is when we are participating in conversations, right? So, so that's so good. Um, I know that you are super busy and so I don't want to keep you all day. Say hi to the, I think, was it Jordan? That was Brayden. That was like, say hi to Miss Stacy. Hi Brayden. Yes. Now he ran back upstairs because he's supposed (laughs) to be doing work because we're trying to we do work in spurts around when I'm setting up transplants and working and when, you know, Ryan's trying to help make sure all his seniors still graduate. So yeah, oh my all goodness. that. Yes. Yeah. That's, and that is so real. Like we are, we're talking about how everybody's lives have changed. Um, sorry, my um, connection is getting spotty, but um, cause we are doing that too. We are trying to figure out how to do school and work and home and, be okay. And everybody's in that. So I really think that having tangible things like what you've named to be positive when we can and be affirming. um, And if we're not able to, then don't participate in negativity for sure against healthcare workers Um, to be careful of the lens that we are um, looking at things through to wash our hands is super helpful and to be patient with 
all of the healthcare providers that we know and that we come across. I really am so thankful for your time. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Thank you for your insight. Thank you for the work that you are continuing to do. And thank you. Um, please let Ryan know. Thank you. I have a graduating senior, not at his school, but how important um, teachers and counselors have been in this season um, for kids that are so season for them too. Yeah, definitely. They're not necessarily motivated to, like everything is so different. So I know it's it's a harder than usual burden um, to soldier through. So tell him I said thank you. Um, thank you again for spending time with us today. And no I look forward to seeing you guys. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Bye Stacey. Bye. I miss you. Thank you. Bye. I'll see you later. Bye.